construction or the menorah, other kailing. So as if Kamare, I share Ereso Bahor, came to us. The way that I showed it to you, Bahor, on Har Sinai, Kaviyoko, the Moshal, and telling him, that's how you should make it. So that in the post of it's obvious that Moshe knew what it's supposed to look like at the end. Which is always important because from the uh, text itself of uh, Truma, Tetzave, etc., et it doesn't tell you how it's supposed to look at the end. It says it's supposed to be a seven uh, branched menorah, or how are the branches? How is it supposed to be formed? And we have, in fact, as I mentioned to you, many different opinions. Uh, Fortune as to how the menorah looked, etc. So there's a concept of a kamari asher erasable heart that on our Sinai Moshe saw things. So, first of all, we have the concept which the Gemara discusses that just like there was a base on English Lamata, there was a base on English Lamata. What does that mean? Heaven has buildings. Mm-hmm. Heaven has a mishka, our bonnets. So all of the four should agree that it was to be understood in a spiritual sense. In other words, in Bashamai, Moshe understood what each and every one of the Kaili represented, what it accomplished its effect in the universe. Because there are different things here. There's what, how the Jewish people saw the Kali, how the Kali were made, the influence the Kali had. So the influence they had on people was one thing. So you have a nice building and beautiful artifacts, the museum, right? You see how people are interested in museums. Every country has museums. Every city, because people are interested. They want to see what it looked like. And what influence that has upon them. But there is, so to speak, a higher influence. That it has an influence somewhere in nature, in the universe, in creation. So that's Kamara Asher Hera Bahor. That's what Moshe saw on the mountain. He saw all of the levels that the Mishkan and the Kalim had in all of the spheres that they existed. And therefore, that's the idea that in heaven there was a Migdash. The Mesa Migdash Lamata is connected to the Mesa Migdash Lamayla. We have that by, by Yerushalayim. And Yerushalayim Shalmata, so Yerushalayim Shalmata has the Kakim, and it has all, you know, it has everything a big city has. But there's a Yerushalayim Shalmala. So I know maybe Yerushalayim Shalmala also has the Kakim, but, uh, but it's different than the Yerushalayim Shalmata. <laughs> Nevertheless, they, so to speak, coexist. And Yushalayim Shalmala represents what Yushalayim Shalmata should be. Its influence, its spiritual significance, what it creates for the world, etc. Now, Kamari Asher also Bahor, the Gemara says, also is the basis for what we call there are many things in the Malacha, many things in the Torah for which we have no source. You are always asked, Hey, Ksiv, where is it written? <coughs> so, most of the time, the Gemara comes up with Psuki. It shows us what the Yudimul Dinos Shator and Idrashis Mahem, how in the Posit the Malacha is reflected. 
and then it's dependent upon human logic, uh, which uh, opinion we'll adopt, how we see it. And there are different shitas, even we say Rabbi Yishmael is 13 meters, but there are other uh, Tanoim that had different meters. But somehow it wasn't a post. <coughs> somehow, see that. It's written somewhere. There is sometimes that the Gemara says, no. Allah Allah no should be seen. We have no post. We have no remedies in the post. No hint of it. But Moshe saw it on Sina. Moshe knew it from Sina. Well, that's a different level already. And that's not subject anymore to our logic or to ask questions or to even to discuss it. That ends the conversation. The moment you say, Allah, the motion we see now, it's over. So for instance, how do we know that film has to be black? In today's world, if we didn't know that, so that would be, it would depend on the color of the bar mitzvah invitation. So the Gemara says, Allah, the motion we see now. That's what Moshe saw on Sinai. Saw black film. So that's why we have black film. And we have many, many other places in the Gemara. Allah for Moshe in Sinai. That's what Moshe saw in Sinai. There's a famous uh, anecdote that Chassidim liked to tell. There's no one that tells over a Chassidish story as well as a Muslim. <laughs> Because uh, only in the Snagit can truly appreciate it. <laughs> but it's seen him, it's a lot of much to see that. It means, okay. So there was a uh, famous uh, discussion about a Yashaomi in Kedusha. And there were many opinions as to what the Pshat was. So the uh, Misnagdim wanted to tease the Chassidim. So they asked Reb Zusha, Reb Zusha Arnipola. So Reb Zusha played that he was an Amoritz, he was a, you know, they called him the holy fool, the Eilik and Ar. <laughs> Maybe Eshko will call his foreign minister here, <laughs> Kruger and Ar. <laughs> so, in any event, they asked him, shot in this year in Shalmi, what it is, what to do. And he answered them. So then they went back to the Golden of Vilna, and they said, we asked the uh, Zusha, and this and this is what he said. What do you say? So he said, the Zusha is Gerech. He's right. That's what the Yerushalmi means. That's the Yerushalmi. But the Gohan allegedly said, but to Muhammad, to me, it's a wonder. How did the Zusha know it? <coughs> How does he know that Yerushalmi? How does he know the Pshat? So, <coughs> so they went back to Reb Zusha. And they said, you know, we went to the Gaon. I'm down this all a fictitious story, but it's nevertheless. <laughs> they went back to Rajusha and they said, you know, we asked the Gaon, and we told the Gaon what you said, and the Gaon said, you're right. But he said, how, how could Rajusha know this? Rajusha did Columbus. So Rajusha allegedly said, go tell the Gaon, I knew it from where the Yerushalmi knew it. So there is such a concept as the Allah Moshe Messina. And the Allah Moshe Messina is irrefutable. But sometimes the Gemara says something different. The Gemara Babakanda, famous Gemara in Kate Sadarego, 
Ze heeft heel goed zo die muren wel. So the usual translation by the rabbis in the yeshivas is Allah Moshe Misina. Yochus Adimir Allah, this is the Allah that they were. Again, no cash is on it. But the Mephur Shia and the Mora don't accept that. Because if the Mora said Allah Moshe Misina, I may mean Allah Moshe Misina. If they say Hilchus Agmir law, then they say Hilchus Agmir law. Why didn't they say? If, if they're synonymous, then why didn't they say Allah Kol Moshe Messina? Because uh, just as you have to be careful, uh, inordinately careful, with any uh, language in Mikra, Chumish Tanakh, they're not just words, it's not just grammar. So you have to be inordinately careful in the mission of the Gemara also. They're very careful what they say. And that's why you always have in the Gemara, Omar so and so, the Tema and others said it was somebody else that said it. Who do they care that said it? We're talking what the Allah is. So you have to be careful who said it. How did he say it? The Gaon says, it depends on the accent of the, of the person who said it. Sometimes you can say the same thing, but if you come from Galicia, it sounds far away. When you come from Germany, it sounds a different way. And you can come to a different conclusion. So therefore, you have to know who says it. The Gemara is uh, very careful in these things. So then why does it say, Oh, so give me a so Hilchus of Gemirla is not Allah of Moshe Misinai. Hilchus of Gemirla is, we learn that this is the Allah. I don't know whether Moshe saw it on Sinai or not, but we have a tradition of a thousand years, two thousand years, three thousand years, that this is the Allah. So if this is the Allah, then this is the Allah. And we find that in the Gemara often that sometimes they had a question, what to do. So they said, Ray uh, Amo Dabar, go outside and see what the people were doing. What do you mean the people? The people are coming on the you know, they don't know anything. They didn't go to risk. Well, who cares what they say? So there's an idea here that all of the fortunes say is that Jewish people don't make mistakes in these things. If this is what the people are doing, then that must be what the Allah is. Then that must be correct, even though I cannot bring the source, and I cannot prove it logically, and I, I don't have any of the tools, and I cannot even say it's Allah or Moshe Messina. But it's Hilchus of Gemirah. That was the Allah, that's how people did it. That's how the Jewish people do it. And from that, we have the, it's a long discussion, we won't have it now, but from that you can understand why the Gemara and Beitzah says, for instance, that minig mabat al What do you mean minig mabat al What's the, what's the minig? The halach is halach. The main town says, osi osi. <coughs> <laughs> the same letter is spelled Gehenna. What do you mean, Minik? There are a lot of Minhagim that are Betos, that are mistaken Minhagim. You see that in the Akonim, how they try to correct it. But nevertheless, the concept remains. If the people are doing it, then somehow you cannot say that it's wrong, it's outside the pale. <coughs> not what the Torah wanted. So all of that stems from the posit that we have in this week's Parsha, Kamari Asher Heroes, 
just what I showed you, Kain Tasu. So it's not only Kain Tasu on the Mishkan, it's Kain Tasu and all the mitzvahs of the Torah. But Hanan Yimena Kachim, what's that before? What's the title? Torah. 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 Torah.